the most important conversation you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, eventually you'll act on it. And my self-talk was the most disgusting self-talk of all time. So the sewer of my mind, like I said, you have to go back in there and fix things. A lot of us are afraid, like right now, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have found me on this show. I was too embarrassed to tell you I stuttered, mm -hmm. I lied, mm -hmm. all these different things, getting beat up, getting bullied, whatever happened. But that's where the true transformation starts to happen. I mean, you can look at people, anybody, thousands of people, one person and say, hey, this is who I am. And this is where I have to fix myself. Mm -hmm. And this is where it really happened. I thought it happened when I was in, you know, 19, 18 years old, trying to pass this military test. Right. It happened here when I was almost 300 pounds spraying for cockroaches, mm. making a thousand dollars a month. Mm. And, you know, people called me dumb. People, my dad called me so many things, it's not even funny. Mm. Being beat just stripped me of all self esteem. This is when I realized I was alone mm. on this earth. Yeah. I have God but alone on this earth and I have to fix everything. So this is where I started to develop an indestructible mental toolbox. A lot of us run away from our fears. Sure. And we box ourselves in to a, a lifestyle of this is all we can do. Right. I'm afraid of everything outside this box. Yeah. So I'm comfortable inside this box. I jumped the box for the first time in my life. Mentally, I jumped the yeah. box and said, hey, I, I, I got to come out here and play. Most people believe comfort is ultimately a good thing. Complacency is insidious. We have too many opportunities to settle. We get pacified and we refuse to struggle against resistance. No one sits down and makes a plan for becoming obese. No one decides a dead-end job is perfect. And no one purposefully designs a relationship that leads to unhappiness. These things happen. They creep in on us. Every new rung you climb in the ladder of life is an opportunity to settle, to get comfortable. People stagnate in their careers and some athletes never make it to the next level. They knowingly or unknowingly get soft and comfortable. The second you embrace comfort is the second you stop progressing, even if you have made it pretty far. We all have a fire in us, whether you are aware of this fire or not. It doesn't change the fact that humans are born with an innate desire to improve. The problem is that over time, we suffocate this fire. The average American spends three to four hours on a phone each day. What could you do with this amount of time? Add that time up and you could have gone back to school gotten a private pilot's license, started a business, and so much more. You can look at your phone, binge-worthy, video service, or any other time suck as a giant pacifier shoved in your mouth, just like we give to babies who need to be soothed. Every time you pacify yourself, the fire you have inside is suffocating. Who could you become? What could you do? What impact could you make? Most humans will go to their graves without having answered these questions. You won't find out if you don't feed the fire. We have the desire, but it's easy for us to get sedated. The unwillingness to pursue discomfort together with the hyper comfortable lives we live lead to laziness, sparking most of our problems today. On a basic level, if you feel you should do something or desire to do something that matters, that is worth doing, resistance comes. We live in a soft world where you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. The existence of resistance cripples us. This idea is no different than lifting a heavy load for increased strength. If you want to get stronger, you will need to lift a mass. This mass will resist your muscles through gravity. If you do it, you will be better for it. The more you lift that resistance for the long term, the easier it gets over months and years. You will have to move on to new challenges and meet further resistance if you want to continue to get stronger. Fighting resistance for progress rings true in the gym and in life. Some people do not fight resistance at all, garnering little success in life. Others challenge resistance to a certain point and then get comfortable, never increasing the load. These are the people who achieve a moderate level of success, but who stop short. The effort required to oppose resistance will be met with an equal amount of success. Never stop fighting resistance. 
never stop growing and never ever get comfortable. I'm up about five, five thirty. So every morning starts with a run. And that's because that's the one thing I hate to do more than anything in the world. So that's like my cup of coffee. And I'm all about armoring yourself. So the second you leave your house and the second you open your phone, the second you do any of that, you are now letting in poison and cancer. So I make sure a lot of things you can't avoid. So as I get up, I start to armor plate my mind and body. Like a person's going to war, you put your body armor on. That's what I'm doing on that run. I'm waking up and I'm giving myself all this armor. So when I come out in the world, now look at that phone, I'm ready. I'm not waking up late. I'm not rushing around. I'm not disorganized because I know I'm going to get hit in the mouth. There's a, there's an art to getting hit in the mouth. And that is why these things are important. You have to wake up and you have to give yourself belief. You have to give yourself confidence. So that, it starts with that run. Discomfort yields progress. Discomfort is a teacher, a litmus test for activities we should be doing. So when you think about success, think about the discomfort. Discomfort will become how you prioritize everything and organize your effort to achieve what will genuinely make you grow. It's easy to say, chase discomfort. And if that was all there was to it, I could end up here. You could go after things that make you feel uncomfortable and see results. There is some truth to this, but in the real world, it's a bit more complicated. The challenge is that you need to find discomfort in the right areas and the right amounts. You will need to prioritize your discomfort daily. Unfocused and occasional discomfort will result in some progress. However, the growth you see with this type of effort will result in a linear progression and what we are chasing are geometric results. You don't only need to do something that makes you uncomfortable today. You need to put a focus on your discomfort, compounded in the same areas over decades. You may have to start small, but one area of discomfort will build on the next area. And as this happens, you will see more and more success. When you see a successful person in any domain, there is no doubt they have been pursuing discomfort for a very long time. They sucked once, they got uncomfortable, kept at it, and then they started to suck a little bit less. Over time, they went from sucking to decent. After they were decent, they became good. They then went from good to great and finally to world class. The key is daily over decades. Pursuit builds success. Continuous daily pursuit is very uncomfortable. We all have the same building blocks. We all have 24 hours in a day to shape our future and build who we want to become. However, some succeed at a high level and others coast into mediocrity or worse. Today, you can have anything you want whenever you want. New technological advances are inspiring and impressive, but are we leading it or are these advances leading us to a life of slothful ease? You need to concentrate your efforts and limit distraction. Embrace the suck and get comfortable handling challenges alone. But where do you start? What areas of discomfort will produce results? Of all the things you could be doing, what should you be doing? Comfort is like a baby lion. You take it on as an adorable little pet. And in the beginning, loving and nurturing it is no problem. However, as the lion starts to grow, you have to feed it more and more. Eventually, you realize this beast was never meant to be your pet. That cute face that lured you in now has sharp fangs and paws the size of your head. Eventually, the lion will destroy you because that's what lions do. Embracing comfort is an insidious process that can shorten your life and decrease your enjoyment of it. In order to make the most meaningful impact, we have to clear the weeds on comfort. Once we clear up all the sneaky ways, comfort is creeping into your life and slowing you down. Then we can tackle what killing comfort looks like and set you on the path towards a better life.